Good morning, my sister and brother, Bertha Warrior here, trusting that you are doing well. How was your Thanksgiving? Did you have a great one? I'm glad that you did, my sister and brother. So let us get into our topic today, and it is selfishness and dishonesty swept away. And this is, He Shall Receive Power by Ellen G. White. So let us go ahead and bow for prayer before I get into my lesson. Father God, I thank you, Father God, for this beautiful day, Father God. I thank you, Father God, for allowing us to see another Thanksgiving day, Father God, that we can gather with families, Father God, and give you praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we thank you for another opportunity, Father God, right now, Father God, another moment right now to give you praise, honor, and glory. Father God, right now I'm asking you that you will decrease me, Father God, so that you'll be increased. Allow your Holy Spirit, Father God, to take full control through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, let's get into our topic today. Unselfishness and dishonesty swept away. And fear came upon every soul, and, every, and many wonder. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostle. And all that believed were together and had all things common and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. Hey, Brenda. Oh, my sisters. Thank you so much for stopping by. Trusting that you had a super awesome Thanksgiving. And so this is coming from Acts chapter 2, 43 through 45. Father God, as we go into this lesson, Father God, I ask you, Father God, to open our hearts and minds to receive this information. I thank you, Father God, through the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it stayed here. It is not because of niggerliness on the part of God, meaning what niggerliness meaning is meaning unwilling or showing unwillingness. It is not because of niggerliness on the part of God that there is a lack of the Holy Spirit in our churches. The lack, this lack, the church alone can change. This lack, the church alone, the churches alone can change. God said to his people, arose and create an interest in holy things meaning awaken and create an interest in holy things. Where is our faith? First question. Wherein do we sustain a proper relations to Jesus Christ? A second question. Third question. Do we follow him in self-denial and stability? Mm. Do we follow him in self-denial and stability, meaning firmness? Here is the fourth question. Do we talk the truth with the understanding? Do we talk the truth with understanding? When God pour out his spirit upon the churches, they will bear fruit to his glory. The sword of the spirit, newly edged with power, will cut both ways. In God's vineyards, there is earnest work to be done. Let me repeat this. In God's vineyard, there is earnest work to be done. The third angel's message is to be proclaimed with a loud voice over the land. And you can find that in Revelation 14, verses 6 through 12. Every vestige of the business that breeds dishonesty, every thread of unselfishness, is to be swept away by the latter rain. All adultery is to be consumed. Let me repeat this. All adultery, I'm sorry. All, yeah. All adult, all, all adultery is to be consumed. Let every altar be torn down. Save the one that sanctified the gift and the giver the cross of Calvary. New territory is to be added to God's kingdom. New territories is to be added to God's kingdom. New territories is to be added to God's kingdom. New trace of moral vineyard are to be cultivated as the garden of the Lord. 
new trace of moral vineyard are to be cultivated as the garden of the Lord. The honor of the law of God is to be vindicated before the unfallen worlds, before the heavenly universe, and before the fallen world. Let me go back. Let me, I should say, let me repeat this. The honor of the law of God is to be vindicated before the unfallen worlds, before the heavenly universe, and before the fallen world. The bitterest persecution will come, but when zeal arise, I'm gonna go back, no, no, no. The bitterness persecution will come, but when Zion arise and put on her beautiful garment, she will shine forth in the beauty of holiness. God designed us to be let me go back. God designed us to have more life and more power because the glory of God has risen upon the church. Let me repeat this. God designed us to be to have more life. God designed us to have more life and more power because the glory of God has risen upon the church. If the truth is received unslightingly, Barrenness will not continue to exist. Christ's word is eternal life to the receiver. Christ's word is the eternal life to the receiver. So that concludes my devotion, my sister and brother. Selfishness and dishonesty swept away. Okay, so let me uh, turn to the third angel message, uh, Revelation 14 through 6 through 13. I think. Revelation 14, 6 through 12. I usually like to go all the way to 12. So let me go there right now. Okay. And it state here, Father God, as we go into your lesson, Father God, continue this lesson, Father God. And it was we read your word, Father God. I open I asking you, Father God, to open our hearts and mind to receive this information, Father God, through the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name, amen and amen. And it state here. And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation and kindred and town and people. Verse 7, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made the heavens and the earth and the sea and the fountains of water. Verses 8, we are at Revelation 14, verse 8. And they follow another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. That great city, because she made all nation drinks of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the third, and the third angel, verse 9, follow them saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. Here's verse 11, Revelation 14, verse 11. And the smoke of them, and the smoke of their torment ascended up forever and forever and ever and they had no rest day nor night who worshiped the beast and his image and whosoever received the mark of his name verses 12 revelation 14 verses 12 here is the patience of the saints here are they that keeps the commandment of god and the faith of jesus my system, my brother, Babylon is falling. It's a false system. A lot of churches keeps nine of God's commandment, but they are they're, uh, neglect to keep the fourth commandment. Why is that? The fourth commandment, God state, remember the Sabbath day to keep, keep it holy. He state he gave us six days to do what we want to do. That is Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Friday sundown to Saturday sundown. 
is God's time. That is the Sabbath, my sister and brother. Uh, it's always been that way. And you can go ahead and Google who changed the Sabbath from Saturday to Sunday. And that is the system that Satan is using. Hey, Shirley. How my sister? Trusting that you are doing well. So that's the system that Satan is using to do his bidding, my sister and brother. So it's coming a time that we, right now, they have this. I mean, it's already on the books. Uh, worshiping on Sunday. That was not the day that God gave us. He said uh, for us to worship him on the Sabbath day. And even if and he, if you go to look at the um, Luke 24, no, no, start at 23, start at 23, start at maybe like 51 or so. It very clearly state that what Jesus rested in the grave according to the commandment. And then what day did he rose? If you go to Luke, 24 verses 1 it says and upon the first day of the week he rose what day is that it's sunday right so he rose on sunday so he stayed he rested in the grave according to the commandment because remember the women went back and remember they went back home and then they were coming back on sunday and then the body was already he was already risen remember so as we look at the book my sister the word of god he specifically told us to worship him on saturday it was never sunday so you can go ahead and do your own research there's a wealth of information there for you so no one will be able to say well you know what lord i did not know you have you have clear information my sister brother there's nothing that you would like to know about that you cannot find out if you just go and do your own research god is calling us to be responsible for our own salvation my sister and brother we cannot um put the burden on the pastor or the leaders of the churches we ourselves have to do our own research so we have to come to our conclusion but what day did god state okay if he said in uh, exodus exodus um 20 verses 8 through 11 that's the sabbath day he, he specifically tell you so then who changed it why did they change it if you look it up it tells you all that information so that is the day that god set aside and that is the day that he's going to put a seal on his people that worship him in spirit and in truth the individuals that decided to to follow all of god's commandment not only nine and forget them uh, one of the most important one that's the fourth commandment God is going to hold us responsible. So like a state is already on the book to worship, um, forcing individuals to worship on Sunday, which God had told us that is not the day of worship. His day is Saturday. It has always been on forever will be, my sister and brother. So let us continue to study, study for ourselves. The Saturday is the day of worship. It was never Sunday. So when men uh, make it a point to state that if you're going to be persecuted or you, you're going to lose your job because you're worshiping on Saturday and not doing what they want to you to do, meaning they want you to worship on Sunday. And if you continue doing that, knowing that God's state in the fourth commandment, remember the Sabbath day, Saturday, Saturday, Sunday. And if you go against God and continue to do what man wants you to do, then you have already made a decision, right? So you will have the decision and then by you said the marking on your hand, meaning that you're actually doing what man wants you to do. That's the mark. So it's, it's, it's so we have to make sure that we are clear in our mind today. That's why we have to be very careful about the diet that we are eating, because um, by whatever we eat, we become. So God wants us to have a clear mind to make a decision for Him. But you know, with everything that uh, man is doing. Uh, everything that was not supposed to be good for our body. Man is putting a stamp of approval on it and saying, oh, no, no, you can have this, you can have that. And which and God said, no, no, my sister and brother, no drinking, no smoking, no, you know, he has a list of stuff that uh, his people are not supposed to do. Why? Because he wants us to have a clear mind so we can make decisions for him, make decisions for him, my sister and brother. Hey, my sister, how are you? Trusting that you are well. So God wants us to make have clear minds, and we cannot have clear minds if we are eating unclean um, things that he tells us not to eat. So we have to continue to study for ourselves, my sister and brother. And so if you continue to disobey going to church on Sunday, when it becomes law, because it's not law yet, when it becomes law, Sunday is the mark of the beast. That is the sign that the beast and... and, and 
that force set up for themselves. So you will be giving them worship. So then you will, so by, by you doing that, worshiping on Sunday, when it becomes law, it's not law yet, then that will be the mark of the beast. So I see a lot of people talking about the mark of the beast is this and the mark of, no, my sister, brother, it will be uh, Sunday worship. Once the law is passed and you continue to disobey God, then you have already made up in your mind and then you're going to be able, you, then you're going to be doing what man wants to do. And then that's when you get the mark of the beast. Uh, the mark of the beast is not something a mark that you can actually see it's a mark that you made up in your heart and mind that i'm going to disobey god does that make sense does it make sense i hope that makes sense so i don't know why people are marking up their body and all that stuff that is not it my sister brother that is not it and it's not something that god putting in is he putting his love his character we have to have the character of god and we have to remain faithful my sister brother it's not going to be easy it's going to be very difficult, stressful, but at the same time, we know that whatever we go through, God is carrying us through the storm. So we have to just surrender our lives to him and allow him to take full control. That is the only way you and I are going to be able to make it. It's not by my will or my power, but by the power of the Lord. So that's why we need the latter rain. To give us the strength, the power to speak the word for God. Make it clear, my sister and brother, like you said, uh, sound the trumpet and warn the people that that destruction is coming. God is warning us and he's giving us enough time for each one of us to study for ourselves to see whether these things are so. So let us bow for prayer. Father God, I thank you, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you did not leave me here by myself, Father God. If I have said or done anything that was not pleasing or acceptable in your sight, Father God, I ask you that you wash me. And I, plan is, I promise, Father God, to do better the next time. Be with my sister, my brothers that stopped by here today, Father God. I'm not asking you, Father God, to remove the mountains and the valley that they must go through, Father God. But I'm asking you for the power, to give us the power that we need to go through the valleys and the mountains, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for being such a great Father, that you sit high, you look low, Father God, and you have already dispatched angels, Father God, to answer our prayer. And so, Father God, we lay our, all of our burdens at your feet, Father God. We thank you, Father God, for hearing. We thank you for answering through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Okay, my sister and brother, so this is Birdell Warrior. You can find me at birdellwarrior.com. That's B-E-R-D-E-L-W-A-R-R-I-O-R dot -R -R com. And you'll find a free book there. You can also purchase my book there. And you can also follow me over YouTube under Burdell Warrior. While you're there, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell notification so when my videos goes up to YouTube, you'll be the first to be notified. And I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule to stop by here today. May God continue to richly bless you and your family. But before you go, let us do the four hugs for survival. We know that it's four for survival, eight for maintenance, and then there's 12 for growth, 12 for growth. But we're only going to do the four, so here we go. One, two, three, four. Thank you, my sister, my brother. So you consider yourself, you got a big bear hug today. So my sister, brother, I love you. Appreciate you until Monday. Be blessed and take care. I'll call you in a little while, sis. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye.